romance and relationships. That's the subject we're going to talk about here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook, Get Rid of Your Problems, Not Your Partner. Now, this particular topic came into being. It was a conversation that was being held about ladies. One young lady actually in particular brought up the topic. She was asking other ladies, are you still wanting to be romanced? Like the guy giving you flowers and the guy leading flowers as a trail to the bedroom or making the, you know, the warm bath with the bubble, you know, the bubble bath and, you know, those different um, things in terms of showing romance. And I just added to the conversation by saying the only thing I'm adding to this is that make sure that it goes both ways and that ladies are actually showing romance towards the guys, too. And then a young lady made the comment. She says, well, women do that. She said women are always planning the picnics and the, um, you know, all the romantic stuff where they'll even cook dinner naked or, you know, they're always doing some stuff that's romantic. And my thing was, I said, I would never use the word women because it's too general and it's not accurate. I said, because... Anytime you generalize, the chances of you being wrong are very, very good. Probably 99 to 100% you're going to be wrong when you, when you use a general statement. And what I was telling her, there are women that do that. There are also men that do that, the romantic stuff. But in general, people don't do that. Most people don't know what romance is. People have not been taught what romance is. And not only that, What's romantic to you may not be romantic to someone else. And that's why I was sharing with her. I said, you may do those things for your man, but don't make a general statement because it's not accurate. It's not what people are doing. That's why divorce rates are at all time high. And a lot of people are preferring to stay single now than actually get married. Because romance is one of those things that's not happening in relationship. And it's not a lost art, as some people say it's a lot. No, it was never there. We want to compare generations. And you guys know my objective is to, to simplify things. But you're talking about, you're looking at a generation in the past where the guy was the breadwinner. And in most cases, women stayed at home. So a lot of women stayed there not because of romance, not because he was this great husband, but because he was the breadwinner and what was her options. And so they'll put up with a lot of garbage just to, to know that they had a roof over their head and that their family would be taken care of a financial perspective. And so you had a lot of guys that took advantage of that and ran over their women. And unfortunately, you have some of that today too, but that's the way it was. But in today's culture, most women are working. Most women are in a position where they can take care of themselves. And that's why when people ask me, why is divorce high? And I go, a lot of that is the reason because the days of them putting up with a guy just being present and just as a man and just saying, well, I'm the man of the house. That's not going to hold a lot of water with a lot of women in today's culture. You're going to have to bring something to the table to where she feel like she really wants to be with you and vice versa. And that's why, you know, for everything I'm going to share, I don't get into it. And that's what I was sharing with them is I don't get in the male female comparisons um, because I think all that's myths when they go, this is how men are. This is how women are. And these are the roles. All that's myths. Those are all things that were made up and they're not accurate. And unfortunately, they create chaos in relationships. And the reason I say that for those of you that maybe this is your first time hearing me speak is there's a thing that Tony Robbins uh, teaches called the six human needs. Notice he said the six human needs. He didn't say the six women needs, the six men needs, the six human needs. Certainty, uncertainty, significance, love and connection, uh, growth, and then contribution. Now, depending on... And even he has said men are a certain way, women are a certain uh, way, which amazes me because if just what I just said, if you have six human needs and there is no order, no pecking order, you have to talk to the individual to see what's 
most important to them to know why they behave the way they ha behave, then that means there's no way you can look at an individual and say, this is how men are, this is how... That's why I said all this stuff is mind-blowing that people continue to teach this. Because a guy whose significance is number one, which I happen to fall in that category, uh, significant is my number one, and a woman that significance number one, they're going to operate the same way, the way they run their life, the way that their relationships are. They, they're they looking for significance. It, it doesn't matter if they're male or female. So why we keep trying to make, if you're a, a woman that relationship is your number one, you know, and in this case where he's talking about the six human needs, it would be love and connection. If love and connection is number one, then you see the world from different eyes. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. You're driven by love and connection. It's just unfortunate we're in a culture that teaches a guy who his number one need is love and connection. We say negative things about him like he's soft and, you know, he's weak or he's what. No, he's driven by love and connection. And it's unfortunate that we keep teaching this stuff and we keep passing on from generation to generation. It's not a male or female thing. It's what's driving you and those six human needs. And what he shares and Tony teaches is that there is no order, no pecking order. But the top four, which is certainty, uncertainty, significance, love and connection, people will do whatever it takes to make those a reality. They spend their whole life in those four and, and, and the order depends on the individual. That's why that's why it just again it amazes me that we keep saying how men are and how women are when it's been proven that the order and those needs will determine on how you act and how you see the world. So if there is no certain order, and it doesn't matter if you're male or female, how that order is, how can we be the same? The only thing that makes men a men is physical. The only thing that makes women and women are physical. You can get into, we have certain X's and all. That's physical. You guys follow? That's physical. That's not a mental perspective. From a personality mental perspective, human beings operate the same way. They all have the same needs. It's just which order we have those needs set up is what's going to drive us. And so I even teach the four personalities, which the acronym STAR is the way to remember it. And the S stands for stability. The T is theory. The A is your action person. And the R is relationship. Depending on, in those four, depending on which order, depends on how your life is being driven. It's not a male or female conversation. It's which personality fits you. Because I remember um, I was sharing with a friend about the theory personality, how technical they are. They're very sharp people. They're usually not very connected as far as uh, intimacy, the relationship side of their, their personality. They're not, they're out of touch with that. They usually have bad, bad people skills. But the more I explained that to my friend, she's like, oh my goodness, you have no idea what you just did. And I'm like, huh? She's like, you just explained my mom to me. She said, all these years, I felt there were some women that shouldn't have kids. And my mom was one of those. And she said, and you just identified her. Exactly, because it's not a male or female conversation. It's the personality, the characteristic. Her mom is a T, a technical person, which are usually your engineers. And you guys know if we're said technical, your engineer, your astronauts, your, your engineer, you know, uh, um, the very technical fields. So that's their thought process. They have a different conversation. The way they see the world is going to be different from some person that's into relationships and, and wants can't we all just get along? You see where I'm saying the difference in, in, in what's going to drive them? And so again, and the reason I'm stressing that is so that we get out of this male-female comparison stuff, realize people are individuals and get to know the individual. And that's back to the conversation we're having about the romance. This is not a male or female conversation. This is what does your partner look for? And again, if you talk about the lang the love languages, what drives them? What do they like? Do they like to hold hands? Do they like to hug? Do they want to be told I love you? Do they like you running bath water for them? Do they like the roses that lead to them? What drives them? There are some guys, whether you like it or, like it or not, want the roses going to the bed 
And they, in, in some cases, their women know that and do that. They may not say that in public because the world will, huh? What? That's my point. It's like people are not allowed to be themselves without being judged because you have to follow these rules that people are trying to put out here on what a man does, what a woman does, how they see the world, and all of it's made up. It's like uh, one of the guys from Mind Valley, uh, Vishan. Vision, vision, that's how he pronounces it. It's V I S H E N, <laughs> but I probably just destroyed it. But it's vision, the, but he talks about that. He calls them rules. And basically, he said the rules of the world that were already put here before we got here. And that's kind of what we're talking about here. These rules that have put out here, this is how it's supposed to be. And the reason he calls them rules, because he's putting the B in front of rules, because he, he calls them BS rules. And I'm and I'm in total agreement with them. That's exactly what they are. They're BS rules that we keep trying to stress to the world. And that's the reason people are having relationship issues because they keep buying into this. Now, I'm not saying if you're a person that believes the, the man should be the breadwinner and the woman should stay at home, that that's wrong. If that if you're a woman that wants to stay at home and he's a guy that wants to, his wife to stay at home, you guys are a match. That's not saying good, bad, right, or wrong. But when you have a couple that she wants to work and he wants to work, that doesn't make them wrong. Just because you're a person with, oh, women ain't supposed to be out of work. No, that's you that don't want to go to work. Don't put that tag on other women that want to work. I've had, especially with this pandemic th thing going on, there are women that, are, that, that I talk to all the time that they're going haywire. They said, I couldn't imagine staying at home and not working because I'm going crazy right now without working. Because, again, significance. What is it that makes you feel significant? And for some people, it's getting out of the house and actually doing something. Them staying in the house and cleaning the house and making sure the house is cleaned or catering after their husband, for them, doesn't make them feel significant. They may feel like they're more of a servant to this man and that's going to create chaos in that relationship if that's the way she's you guys follow me? it's that's why i always say it's always about the individuals and what they're looking for and you're looking for somebody who's headed in the same direction as you so when we talk about this romance this is not a man um treats woman a certain way and she just receives but he's he's the only one that's bringing romance into the relationship because if there is no romance, it's because he ain't taking care of business. No, this, we're in this together. If there's ro no romance, we both messing up. And the example I used, um, I talked about you know my wife and Valentine's Day. The first time we we had a Valentine's Day, uh, husband and wife. She got mad at me because she came home. She's like, "What do you have planned for the day?" And I was like, uh, "Let's." go grab a movie and then we'll go grab some dinner she's like you don't have it planned i said just said you know let's go grab a movie and we'll do some dinner and she was offended and her feelings was hurt and she started pouting and and i saw so i let her pout for a little while and then i told her i said well dear let me apologize i said because i didn't know valentine's day was man show woman he cares day i was never taught that and i apologize i said i i never do that I was always under interpretation. The purpose of Valentine's Day was kind of like a mutual thing that we were showing each other we cared. Like it's a Valentine's Day. It's like, hey, you know, show each other we appreciate each other. It wasn't woman sit back, relax, man shows her he cares day. I didn't know that. And I can still be wrong. Nobody is still, and I've even said this on my videos, if I'm wrong, please help me understand because nobody has still told me that that was wrong in the way that I saw it. Um, because they go, well, yeah, it is. It's, it's both parties. It's not a man show woman day, but that's the way she took it. And I said, so this is what we'll do. 364 days a year, I'll mistreat you, but I'll make sure on Valentine's Day, because the world says that's the day I show you I care. That's the day I'll make sure I treat you well, since you need that day to know that I actually care about you. And she picked it up instantly. And she said, wow, that's crazy, huh? I'm like, yeah. All the stuff I do for you all year round, I, I'm always here to support and do everything. And because I didn't have a Valentine's Day plan, you got an attitude? Really? See, some of you may hear that and still be like, well, she should to each his own. But we didn't have any more issues after that. 
most of our Valentine's Day from that point on. And I was with that young lady for 32 years. For those of you who don't know my story, I lost her six years ago to cancer. But I was with her for 32 years. 21 of those, uh, 21, I'm saying 21, but actually uh, 23 of those, well, 22, 23, it was like 22 and a half. But anyway, of those were married. And, he let, and nine of those we actually did uh, dating. And that's a whole nother story too. Again, those that don't know my story went through a lot of uh, challenges in the first nine years. And you, you can go and um, I have videos that tell my story. But the bottom line is we started using, we're more concerned with taking that day to shower each other and show each other we care. Even if we just sat on the couch, hugged up with a cover watching uh, uh, a movie with some popcorn. But we were together because we didn't let the world decide for us what's romance and what works and, and what causes your relationship to work. And so hopefully you don't get caught in that either. And, and for people trying to tell you, well, if he's not putting flowers or he's not doing that, then he's not romantic. No, it depends on if that's what you want. Now, my thing is you need to communicate with your partner and find out what it is that does make them feel good and do those things and it works both ways and it's not because you're doing it out of obligation i hope not because your relationship's gonna be in trouble anyway but you do it because i care about you so if i know that you love bubble baths and i know it's been a rough day or a rough week or whatever i would do that because i care and i'm like man I know she's had a rough day or a rough week and it's like, what can I do for her? Not because out of obligation, but because the fact is we're in this together. And that's one of the things I keep sharing with people is that we're supposedly on the same squad. And this, of course, if we're talking about an intimate, but you should be like this in all your relationships, but not. But the one that you're intimate, you definitely should be doing everything, bending over backwards to make sure it's like we're in this together. We're a squad. We're a team. I should be trying to figure out how do we make this team gel? What can I do to help this team gel? And hopefully you got a partner doing the same thing. There's so many people that treat their friends and treat strangers better than they treat the people they have intimate relationships with. That includes their partners and their families. And you got to stop that. And I hear people and I've had even family members tell me, well, family, you can say anything. No, you can't. People are human beings first, then your family member next. And if you're a person that dishonors me, I don't care if you're my brother, my cousin, my mom or whoever, you're a person that dishonors me and disrespects me. I don't want to hang out with you. You don't get a privilege in a past because you're my brother, cousin to mistreat me. And I'm going to say, well, you know, that's my family member. So it's OK. I, I accept being mistreated. No, you draw a line. There's certain ways you have to have that expectation of how people can treat you. And most importantly, how you treat yourself will determine on how people treat you. And that's self-love Monday. But anyway, <laughs> we're saying, but you got to learn, as you guys know, I keep saying, if we get care, take care of you when you love you some you. You do some romance on you. Take you out some time. Spend some time. Buy you so, yourself some flowers. Take care of you a little bit. Then it becomes easier to look out for someone else. Because it's like what I keep saying, when you're fulfilled, then you're not looking for someone else to fill you up because your tank is full. And because now, if anything, you got an overflow, you're looking for who can I contribute to? And it makes it easier to go into your relationship looking out for your partner and wanting to do and figure out how to be romantic in your relationship. Why? Because you ain't focused on you because you go, I'm good. I'm taken care of. I'm all right. How you doing, baby? You all right? And I'm trying to figure out how to help you, you know, at least what I can do. Because ultimately, as we all know, you get to decide on whether you're happy, sad, mad or whatever. I can't control that. I don't care what people try to tell you. your partner. If you ain't happy, it's because you choose not to be. You may not want to hear that. But your partner, no one has any control over your emotions. You have. Those are other videos. Go check those out <laughs> that I have where we talk about that. But you control your emotions. But the bottom line on this, understand romance is whatever you believe it is. Learn what is romantic to your partner. Do those things. And it doesn't always take money. It doesn't take, 
you know, uh, uh, going to get roses and throwing roses. Um, for some people, it's just if you just wrote a note to your partner, put it on the refrigerator. Say, uh, have a great day. Love you. You see, little things like that, just to let your partner know I'm thinking about you. Do those kind of things. Those are romance. And then have the conversation with your partners of things that they do like to do and do some of those things. And again, I always say if it doesn't uh, uh, cross your religious beliefs, your your uh, uh, take you out of integrity or anything like that, why wouldn't you want to do it? You're my partner. We're in this together. Anything, and that's what most people say in their wedding vows, although they don't understand what it means because they're definitely not practicing it, I should say. And that's that anything I do to you, I'm doing to me. So because I do love me some me, and I'm always going to look to do what's right for me, if we as one, then I'm always going to be looking out for you too. And what can I do to help your life? Because you're in this together. Folks, understand, taking care of your partner and making sure you can do it for your partner. Do you understand you reap the benefits of that? We've all heard the story that if you, if you got to make love outside the bedroom, if you want love inside the bedroom, folks, again, this is not just a woman topic. Guys are the same way because if he ain't getting along with you, chances are those are the guys that you see step outside their relationship. Because they ain't necessarily, don't get caught thinking this because you're so good in the room, he's going to put up with it. Guys do it all the time, unfortunately. And it's not, again, it's like just a guy thing because women do it too. So, but anyway... Hopefully you guys understand romance is basically talk to your partner, find out what interests them, do some of those things, be creative, read some books, talk to some of your friends, find out some of the things they've done. The key is how important is your relationship to you? And if it's definitely if it's someone you married, hopefully it means a lot. And what can we do to spice up? Because when we talk about again, we talk about the, uh, the those those. Uh, the human needs, we want certainty. There's certain parts of our relationship that we want to be certain about, which means I know you coming home and you ain't getting stopped by some other woman's house um, or and vice versa, you ain't getting stopped by some man's house. Then we want some uncertainty, which means we do like surprises. As human beings, that's a part of, if your relationship becomes where everything, we know exactly how it's going to go. We know what time we get up in the morning. We know what time we go to work. We know what time we come in home. We know what time we eat. We, just think how I just said, that in itself is boring. You got to add some spice to the relationship. And that's where that romance comes in. Add some of that to your, to your relationship. And we'll get everything else running smoothly. And as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you who we, we, we talk about the self-love, I look forward to talking to you on Monday, self-love Monday. And then, again, for those of you that we, we're working through our relationships or we're fine-tuning our relationships, I'll see you next Thursday on Relationship Thursday. Oh, and by the way, you can go check out, um, I just released three new video series. Uh, you can run over to ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, ronsimplifiedmyers.online. And you can find everything that I got going on right now, but I also have um, a big discount where you can get all three of those programs. And pretty much I got going on right now, it's a special where you pretty much, you're almost getting all three for what you would normally pay for one. So anyway, go check it out. Uh, give me feedback. You can hit me on any of my social medias. I'm not hard to track down. I always tell people, if you can't catch me, because you ain't trying to. <laughs> so again, enjoy the journey. And as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. I'll talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.